factor analysis is also called as dimension testing okay dimensionality testing uh, factor analysis is an important part when it comes to scale uh, development or measure development and factor analysis is also an important part when we will be doing our analysis uh, using structural equation modeling. So we will be again looking at uh, the measurement models of our constructing and so on. So uh, let me just uh, talk about what is factor analysis. So factor analysis is essentially we are trying to understand uh, the, the common source, right? So we have been talking about in our earlier discussion, the uh, reflective indicators and the idea of common source. So factor analysis is a method to actually test that empirically to represent parsimoniously the set of scores, which is our items um, and their relationships with a latent factor. Okay. And we want to check what are the underlying dimensions, underlying uh, constructs related to these uh, items in the mesh. So there are two kinds of factor analysis. One is what we call as the exploratory analysis and the other one is called as the confirmatory analysis. So this is again a diagram I have taken from the chapter, what is measurement uh, uh, that is given in the reading folder. So you see there are two diagrams of exploratory factor analysis and confirmatory analysis. Exploratory factor analysis shows that uh, item S1, S2, S3, and S4, S5, S6, actually all these items, they load onto both the factors. Now, as the name suggests, exploratory factor analysis does not assume a priori loading of an item on a particular latent factor. So what it does say is that item S1 loads onto both factors. So if there are two factors to be extracted, it assumes that the item is loading onto both these factors and it is going to test what is the loading of these uh, of this item on both I and N. On the other hand, confirmatory analysis assumes a priori information of the items and the latent factors that these items represent. So S1, S2, S3, represents I and S4, S5, S6 represent N. So basically we know clearly that the first three items, they are items of factor I and the next three items, S4, S5, S6 are items of N. So there is a, a priori knowledge of the factors and what we want to do in our analysis, in this factor analysis, we want to confirm this model with the data that we have got. So whether this, this model actually correctly fits the data and it is representing this sort, sort of model is supported in the data. So there is an a priori knowledge of the items and the latent factors available to us. Now, this is this has important implications. Please understand that exploratory factor analysis is done only when you are developing a new measure for the construct. That means you are coming up with a new understanding, with a new understanding of uh, you you have challenged either you have challenged the existing factor structure or you want to uh, develop a new measure for the construct. So you want to because you have created that measure, you want to also empirically test 
you want to empirically test what is the uh, factor structure revealed uh, by the data and what are the what are the items that load onto specific factors and and so on so exploratory factor analysis should be done only when you have made the case very clearly for testing the factor structure retesting or testing the factor structure of the measurement right so it is exploratory and it is theory generating because theory why theory generating because you are now going to come up with an empirical test of the factor structure a new factor structure is going to be presented by you using the items and the data that you have collected on those items so this is theory generating on the other hand confirmatory assumes an a priori knowledge of the factor structure so you know that this is the factor structure that has been reported in the literature and therefore now when you are using the same measure validated measure in your analysis you are testing it and you are you are showing that this factor structure holds in my study as well so it is confirmatory there are four major let us come to uh, exploratory factor analysis first and then we will start with confirmatory analysis so what are the four important there are four important decisions that you will have to uh, take which is when you are going to do factor analysis the first one is sample size the second one is factor extraction how many factors should you explore and what should be the nature of rotation that you should follow now uh, factor analysis both exploratory as well as confirmatory factor analysis both of them are a large sample uh, procedure that means you need a substantial number of responses when you are going to do your analysis so our, our recommended uh, number is 10 is to 1 that means for each item in your measure you should collect 10 responses which converts to if you have an item a measure of 10 items you should collect 100 responses if it is 20 200 if it is 30 300 and so on however this does not scale linearly okay which means that if you have a measure of 40 items okay even if you have uh, you you collect data from 400 people but if you have 50 items you don't need to collect from 500 people okay usually we say anything above 300 is a good uh, sample size for exploratory factor analysis 400 is very good and above 500 is excellent right so it does not keep scaling linearly you don't need to keep collecting more and more data for as the number of items in your exploratory factor analysis and usually also uh, uh, today there are hardly there are any scales any measures which will have uh, 40 items usually we good scales or usable scales range between 20 to uh, 30 35 items so large large measures are anyways not uh not so much in in practice then factor loadings you should usually target a factor loading of 0.5 and above ideally let me state it here ideally you should look for a factor loading of 0.7 and above but uh acceptable you can go as low as uh 0.5 in some cases if you feel that the item is really important you can go even up to 0.3 or uh, uh, 0.3 uh, as the 
loading of the item, right? Yeah. Now, when it comes to factor extraction, when you are doing exploratory factor uh, analysis, well, there are two, uh, the most common approach of doing, if you read many papers, the most common approach of factor analysis that you would read in papers is actually principal components analysis. Uh, but let me tell you here that principal components analysis is the wrong method of exploratory factor analysis. The right method of doing exploratory factor analysis is uh, principal access factor analysis. Let me show you what is the difference between these two approaches. Now we have said we have been discussing so far that if you have a if you have a factor okay and you have indicator items i1 i2 and goes up till i10 Okay, so if we have 10 items, right, we know that each item is made up of lambda i f plus the measurement error associated with the item. So ideally, when you are supposed to do factor analysis, okay, you should look for subtracting the measurement error of that particular item and then compute what is f right and you divide it by the lambda and you try to get an estimate of the latent factor latent factor f now principal components analysis is a method which assumes that all of i is usable, okay? It does not subtract, does not take into account the measurement error associated with the item. Okay, so principal components analysis is actually working with the observed item. Observed item. And therefore, this is not the right method. This is actually principal components analysis is a pure data reduction technique. It does not, it is not the measurement model technique or the exploratory factor analysis technique. The actual technique that we should work is what we call as the principal access factoring method, which discounts measurement errors from each item and then estimates the latent factor f okay so the recommendation is please understand and we will see the default option in spss is is principal components analysis so please understand that the default option is not always right Actually, the default option is wrong in this case, and the right option to work with if you are doing measurement testing or exploratory models here, where you are looking at the measurement part, you should do principal axis factor. Okay. Now, number of major uh, number of major factors we would. Uh, the most common idea behind the number of factors uh, to be extracted 
is what we call as the eigen values okay eigen value now let me again explain what is eigen value 